Well, everybody, today I got a uh, new pair of Allen Edmonds shoes. I got a pair of Allen Edmonds Atchison tassel loafers in dark chili. I'm gonna do an unboxing, uh, prep them and shine them for wearing, and then I'm probably also gonna put on some rubber protective half soles. Okay, so let's go. Power Four and shot. a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. Okay, so without any further ado, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these shoes. So this model, uh, this is the Allen Edmonds Atchison. Number is uh, 8017 and I just picked these up here um, I actually purchased them late June of 2020 there's my size 11 and a half 3e triple a uh, D is a standard width so that's the widest they, ma they make I don't actually know for sure that it's gonna fit me because this is the last last is the form Ooh, look at that last is a form on which a shoe is made and uh, um, most of my other Allen Edmund shoes are made on the 65 last. I've got the McNeil as well, and the McNeil's made on a 97. This is on the 2042 last, so I'm gonna talk about that too, but let's just take them out and take a look at what we've got. Look at that. The edge finishing, actually, the first thing I notice on the heels looks very nice. And I think that you could consider this a hole cut. If you see the entire shoe, the only seam on the shoe is in the back, I mean, obviously, the, you know, they have those decorative, I'm not sure what you call this. This is called an apron. Um, they have that decorative stitch there, but it's still one piece of leather, full grain leather. It's very nice. Look at that edge finishing is nice. What I just noticed here is in the waist, the edge is rounded and squared off everywhere else. That's a nice touch. I don't know that I've seen that before in an Allen Edmonds shoe. That's nice. Look at that sole, gorgeous. Stitching looks very well done. It's all captured within the groove. I've had that problem before, so I learned to check for that to make sure that the stitches are where they should be. I had a pair of shoes where they ran off of the edge of the sole. These look like they're done very well. Beautiful. Look at the gorgeous logo in there. Atchison, custom cork insole, handcrafted in America, fine imported leather, that's what that says. Right. You can actually see there. I mean, we're not talking, you know, this is not a, uh, you know, Edward Green or, you know, Gaziano and Gerling shoe. I guess, I don't know if you can see there as the light transition over, They're pretty smooth. I mean, I'm absolutely, absolutely happy. But I'm just pointing out, you know, by the way, this shoe, full retail price is $395. And they just had a, I'm not sure what the sale was called. It was called a warehouse sale, I think it was. Um, these were $129, believe it or not. And then the um, internet, the website said an extra 25% off when you get it in the cart. These shoes were $97 in change. Okay? And it's absolutely unbelievable. You can see there. You can tell this came from a real animal. See that? A little bit of a green. You can see a little leather. I would not consider that a flaw. Because remember, this is, you know, full grain leather came from a real living, breathing animal. And I'd say I have a great pair of shoes here. I'm also just checking all the stitching, the finishing, the back seam. Looking for anything that would, uh, you know, cause me to you don't want to take these things back. And I see nothing. You look really good to me. I wish you guys could smell these things. I love the smell of new leather. By the way, I'll show you a couple things that I did notice um, you know, looking at these compared to the website. So one thing I noticed that the sole here, this is a standard, uh, you know, leather sole. It, it shows the standard leather sole in the ad and it doesn't specify, it doesn't talk about it, but in the picture 
on the website, it actually showed, and I don't remember exactly what it's called. There's another version of the soul that's darker. It's very dark brown, and it's like an oil-infused soul that's supposed to be better, um, you know, more weather-resistant outdoors. And it showed that. It didn't specify, but that's what it showed on the website. So um, just one, one minor difference there, I guess you could say. But So first, I'm going to go ahead and condition them. I'm going to use Safir products here today. Um, I think what I'm going to use here first to condition them uh, is the Safir, and this is the Renovateur. This is a mink oil based. And then uh, I think a very good match for these is going to be the Safir. And uh, this is the Safir Medal Dior. This is mahogany number nine. Um, I'll just show you here as a comparison. Okay, as a comparison on the red or purple side, because this color from Alan Edmonds is called Dark Chili. It is a brown with a definite strong hint of red in it, but it's not burgundy. So let me show you comparison to burgundy and brown. So as a comparison here, this is a brown or dark, uh, I'm not sure if they would call this dark brown. This is brown. This is an old Allen Edmonds shoe though. Uh, this one was made in the 80s. Uh, but here's the brown. If you can see compared to the dark chili, it's not a huge difference, but it's definitely got a red tone in it. And the tone has been darkened, but uh, you know, this is the oxblood. I'm sorry, not burgundy. This is the oxblood color. For the oxblood, I generally use uh, Bordeaux number eight, and it's got a very purple tint to it because I want to accent the red purple side of this color. So usually for the um, uh, for the oxblood, I usually use the Bordeaux again to bring out that red or burgundy wine color. So here's the uh, number nine mahogany, okay, which is what I'm going to use, and it's still going to accent the red hue in it. And then this one is the medium brown number 37 and that's what i generally use on all of my own shoes okay so just to kind of give you a little comparison there so by the way of course the first thing i'm going to do is try these i want to make sure they actually fit before i change them modify them polish them or anything like that now there's actually a certain way that you should try shoes on so let me show you how that you should try them on okay now first of all especially with a loafer because you can't unlace it you never want to jam your foot in because you see this part of the shoe is flexible okay and you can kind of see a line um but you can definitely feel it. there's a hard counter lining in the heel area and you don't want to crush or smush that okay so you know make sure you use a shoe horn okay oh man i think these are going to fit very well in the pinch you can actually use a credit card now, here's another thing. What you don't want to do when you're trying shoes on is you don't want to crease the vamp. So what you want to do is you're going to stand and you're going to walk in them, okay? But when you walk, okay, don't, you know, bend the ball of the foot. You're just going to walk very gently and you're only going to walk on carpeting here. I shouldn't even really walk on tile, but you definitely, you definitely would not want to uh, walk on concrete or pavement with them. Okay, so like I said, you're just gonna walk gently without flexing the ball of the foot to see how they feel. So let me show you. Like I said, you're just gonna walk gently. You see I'm not flexing the ball of the foot, but this lets me walk around and see how they feel. Take your time. So there's a couple things I notice about the fit. I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see the back of the heel there? I have a little bit of slippage in the back of the heel. I have a wide forefoot, but I have very standard width heels. It's not as prevalent. It is not as prevalent on the right shoe. So I think I'm gonna do one of two things. Um, I think the fit is gonna be just fine. My right foot is the wider one. And it's, my foot is right up against it there. But I think I've got enough room. You don't really want a ton of room. You don't want more room than you need. Because then the shoe is going to wrinkle oddly. I can feel my toes right up against there. I think I'm going to go ahead with the moisturization process. And by the way... Um, I tried not to flex them too hard because at first when I was wearing them around the house, I'm like, okay, what if I want to return them? But you can see there, you know, started to get some creases across the vein, which is unavoidable, right? 
Um, but if you're careful, this is what you could what they could look like. Now, even that, do you see those marks? I literally walked onto the back patio, so I, I basically took, I think, two or three steps on concrete. Um, that's what you want to avoid if you were going to return them, okay? So, all right, so let's start with the moisturization. Uh, Saphir, uh, this is the Renovator. This is mink oil based. Right. Remember, these shoes may have been sitting on a shelf for, you know, who knows how long, so I want to get some moisturization into them. And I know this rag is well used, you know, but it'll work just fine. sheeting. Um, I've used this a few times before. This is just less expensive to buy in a big roll, you know, than to buy these little individual, um, you know, uh, little individual soles. Actually, I've changed my mind. I have a few pairs of these left over. I'm going to go ahead and use these. The reason I didn't use these on some of my other shoes is that they weren't wide enough, but since this shoe is a little narrower, this will cover it for you.
don't know how the pros do it, but here's how I do it. So I've got the one side done, okay? So I just take them, line them up. Use the first one as a template for the second one. Yeah, I guess I can just cut right off of it. Okay, so I'm gonna narrate here if anyone wants to learn how to do this. So first of all, one huge key when you are cutting the rubber half soles here is that hooked knife. The tip of that hooked knife gives you a guide. I found it pretty much impossible with a straight knife. Number two, the edge of the sole needs to be very crisp. In other words, it's very difficult to get a clean edge if you're applying a rubber protective half sole to an old sole where that edge is not 90 degrees, you know, because it's been worn. Right here, going over the nose of the toe. Uh, the angle of the shoe changes a little bit. It's hard to articulate, but what it's gonna feel like is you need to stand the knife up straighter, is what it feels like as you go over the tip of the toe. Almost, I don't know, probably a half dozen, first half dozen times I did this, the sole was too short over the nose of the toe. The angle you're gonna hold it to is not quite 90 degrees, not quite parallel with the edge of the sole. Uh, you know, you're holding it like, I don't know, I'd say maybe a five degree, seven degree angle or something like that. That. Um, but again, what you're going to feel like when you're going over the tip of the toe is you're holding it straighter. Now here at the end, see how I grab it with my left hand? That's because you're getting to the edge of the rubber and I'm rocking because if you just pull, the rubber deflects and you won't get a clean cut. So, um, you know, a lot of practice. Yeah, this hole there, but I'll cover that up. See, I nicked this hole there, but I'll cover that up with a polish. Not too bad, huh? As I said, I'm using the mahogany number nine.
okay, time for the mirror shine. Now I'm going to do it a little bit differently, and um, I'm going to link the video below. Preston Soto, the Elegant Oxford is his channel, and I'm going to try his method. It's really a tweak and an adjustment. Uh, I've never used an ice cube, so it's an ice cube, and then there's some water in there, and he doesn't say exactly how much. He shows it in his entire video. I would say it's about 10 to 1 mixture. He uses approximately, maybe it's even more diluted than that, maybe it's 20 to 1, but he's using 91% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol with water. Again, something in the neighborhood of alcohol to water, um, uh, you know, 1 to 10, 1 to 20. So I have approximately the same, um, and just per his got my, you know, I think it needs to be a little wetter, my rag a little bit wet. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do before that is, according to his, and he loads it up a lot more, so I'm going to follow suit. I think his method, what I'm hoping is going to do is speed up this process. So first step is to put approximately six to seven coats. And I'm gonna look at where it creased a little bit when I walk and I don't wanna to go too much further than that. The first couple coats you can go back further but subsequent coats you don't want to or else it'll crack. So I would call that one coat. shoe doesn't have a definite hole uh, toe cap. You have to blend the mirror balls sometimes. I want it to kind of fade back. I'll call that two full coats. Full coats. Four full coats. I don't know if you guys can see that, there's already a shine developed. Look how fast that is. I really think one of the big keys is just, I've never loaded up the toe cap that much before polishing. So it's like you're already starting out. With a really good base of wax. I think that's one part of it. I think another part of it is the ice cube helps solidify the wax very quickly so you don't remove the wax that you just put it on.
spot on the tip of the toe though that doesn't seem to want to take the wax. Let's set up for a minute and go to the other shoe. See, there's still a tiny spot there that's not taking wax. Do you see it? Right there. I'm gonna use some drastic method measures here. show you a couple things here that can help you with the fit of your shoe. Now, obviously here we're dealing with a couple factors. Number one, we're dealing with the fact that this is a loafer and unlike a derby or an Oxford, you know, you obviously don't have any ability to tighten the shoe because there are no laces. So, uh, first of all, one tool here that you could use, these are very easy to find. I think, uh, you know, pretty much any drugstore, obviously you can see where I got these. Uh, these are heel liners. So what the heel liner is, it's a little foam pad, and you can see the shape of it here, and it has self-adhesive on it. And the way this goes, you can see I've already installed one. The way this goes is, it would actually make sure you put it this way, okay? You see there's a cutout, and this cutout, you know, obviously fits above your, your, your heel. So the flatter side goes on the top, the cutout side goes on the bottom. You just peel it off, and if the shoe is nice and clean, you stick it. You would fold it in half after you peel off the backing. Fold it in half like this. You don't want the top right at the top of the, if I can show you here on camera. You do not want to get the top of this. You don't want it right at the top of the shoe, because you don't want to be able to see that pad. So see how you just have it down a little bit, but not too far down, okay? Then you stick the middle in and work it from the middle out. Um, now, the problem I have in the fit with my feet is, as I've mentioned before, my left foot is narrower and slightly longer. My right foot is wider. So I always, if I have any width problems, it's on the right shoe. And now that I've worn these a few times, I will tell you this. Um, and I'm just going to be, you know, blunt and honest with you. I'm not going to return these shoes because, number one, I wore them and wrinkled them. Okay. And number two, obviously, I, you know, cut them up and, and, and put the rubber protective half soles on them. I should have paid a little more attention to the fit.
Now, every time I found I've bought shoes that are not the ideal size, it's usually for two reasons. Number one reason is I got something very inexpensive. Number two reason is I'm just in a rush. I'm just, you know, not patient enough, okay? So to be honest with you, um, uh, uh, what I have found is you can't really tell if a shoe is gonna be too tight, you know, tight enough to be irritating um, on an initial fit, just like wearing them for 10 or 15 minutes. I found personally, just as my opinion, you've got to wear them for a couple hours. So I should have stayed in the house, but instead I went out of the house. Okay. So this is just my opinion. Um, I'm not going to, even though I've seen people do it, I'm not going to return a shoe once I crease it like this. You can see it, it's, it's pretty well creased. I'm not going to return a shoe. Um, you know, and obviously after, you know, you do this, I don't think you can cause you've modified the shoe. Okay. Um, so, uh, here's what I'm seeing because this last is narrower, my big toe is just rubbing a little bit on the outside. The shoe is snug, not too tight, but it is snug. The left shoe, you would think, well, why do I need a heel spacer if my left foot is longer? Well, because my left foot is narrower, it slides forward more. So this actually does help take up the space because I had more space between my heel and the shoe. So this really did help. So let me show you something else that can really help with fit. So these are a little more difficult to purchase. These are, uh, actually these are called tongue spacers or tongue pads. I think this, this would be called a tongue pad. Adhesive backed, I purchased them from the seller Nord Shoe, N-O-R-D-S-H-O-E, Nord Shoe on eBay. I couldn't find them anywhere locally. So these would go on the underside, the, the fuzzy side would go towards your foot. But they would in essence stick under, uh, yeah, they would go this way, they'd stick, um, where did they go this way? They, they would go this way. You could stick them on the top here underneath the tongue. And in essence, what it's gonna do, it's gonna take your foot and that padding is gonna in essence push your foot back more into the heel cup and in my case here my pinky toe rubbing up against the shoe pushes it back so i have a little more space it doesn't change it a ton but it's just enough to make a difference on the fit um so i tried them out already and uh so it's a little wrinkled because i actually was wearing them in my shoe so you can see there they've got a really nice adhesive on them and where I want this thing is I want it a little bit more on the right side. In essence, I want to push my foot back and, and away a little bit. So, um, and you obviously don't want them showing, you know, once they're in the shoes. So I'm going to try to be pretty careful about it. I'm going to curl it a little bit. Uh, I want to right about there. I kind of want it, like I said, biased to the side a little bit. You do not want to move these things around after you get them in there. And that's it. All right, that's pretty close, but it's not where, you know, you're going to see it. Okay. One on that one. Another downside here is they're going right over the size label. So, oh well. And there we go. Okay. All right, now we're in business. So now that I've had these for a few days, um, there is a couple things here that I noticed with them. So the right shoe is very nice. So by the way, do you notice there's, I think it's twofold. This is my opinion, not a fact. I believe the leather on the left shoe, the grain is a little bit looser. The leather is a little bit looser. Let me explain. First of all, can you see what looks almost like faint lines? I noticed. So I believe what they're using here is, this is again my opinion, not fact. You can see a little bit here. The leather just isn't as flexible, you see, as the right shoe. Do you see that? The, the lack of creasing and stuff like that? Um, I believe what they're doing is I think they're using on this left shoe, the leather quality wasn't as good. Maybe it was from a different hide, maybe, uh, um, or what I think is this leather, they went further down towards the belly of the cow. The best leather I believe is in the back, um, you know, the middle of the back, you know, the, the spine area, and then towards the, you know, the, the back of the back. And I think they're going outside further uh, to make more use of the leather they get. And, you know, if I had paid full price for these, um, I might be upset. And this is where I'm a little bit torn on it. When I look at it this close, it is a little more irritating. But when I'm actually wearing them on my feet, it's not. So uh, 
you know, that I, I know this is going to cause a firestorm of, you know, Alan Edmonds, you know, quality comments in the thread here, but whatever. So that's just my personal opinion. I paid $97 plus tax for these things. Okay. So if I had paid $300, yeah, I might be a little more concerned about it, but you know, um, I think the second part of the problem is there is more room around this area on my left foot. My left foot, this area, the, the, the foot's smaller. There's just more area for this to wrinkle. My foot volume is larger on the right foot and takes up more, but that cannot possibly account for that big of a difference in the way they wrinkle. So, um, But I'm going to moisturize them again, um, and uh, I'm going to keep wearing them and see what happens, okay? So the big lesson I got out of this is the uh, 2042 last here definitely has less volume than the 65 last in the forward of the ball of the foot. This last is definitely narrower, um, and I, in my opinion, would probably size up a half size uh, from whatever your 65 last size is. You know, like I already showed you the comparison before, so there's kind of trying to line them up, right? But, so the 2042 last, um, from the, around the ball of the foot and forward, it's narrower, it has less overall width, in my opinion, and this part tapers narrower, and you can see that in the shape. So it's pointier. So take that for what it's worth. I hope that helps. So let's give this uh, shoe an overall rating score. I'm going to give a score in five different areas from one star to five star. Then I'm going to give an average uh, of all those five things together to give the shoe an overall score. So the first area is aesthetics. The second area is fit slash comfort. Uh, the third area is support. Fourth area is construction and durability. And the fifth is cost slash value. So aesthetics. So obviously, you know, how does the shoe look? Well, I almost would have given this a five, except for this. Now, by the way, here's what the shoe looks like. The left shoe that had that more wrinkling on it. I gave it a round of Tanner's Blend from Ashland Leather Company. An extra layer of moisturization. Uh, one extra layer of sapphire. Uh, brushed it off. I brushed it off after moisturizing it too. So you can still see a little bit of those grainy streaks and it does have more wrinkling. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm still torn on this. Um, because of that though, I'm going to have to give these shoes a three. If that leather issue hadn't been there, then I think these would be a four or five for sure. You know, it's a beautiful last shape. It's an elegant shoe. The color is beautiful. Um, it's just you know, I love this detail here, how they have some rounding there on the waist of the shoe, the logo. You know, I think just a beautiful style overall. So I'm going to give it a three on aesthetics. Um, and as far as fit slash comfort, I have to be careful here because, again, I bought this site on scene without getting fitted at Allen Edmonds. I imagine a 12 Triple E would have been a more ideal size. So I'm not going to say, hey, they're tight and knock Allen Edmonds for it. You know, I'm going to take responsibility for that. But as far as the fit and comfort, um, you know, like I said, I don't think there is a loafer out there off the shelf that's going to fit me perfectly. So, but I'm going to give them a four for that because the, the, the fit and the comfort, you know, already having worn these even just a few times, the, it, the leather footbed there is starting to take shape of my foot. I do believe all Allen Edmonds and all leather sole shoes do take a little bit of time to break in. Um, but they're really comfortable to walk in, so I'm going to give it a four on that. I wish I could have a little bit of a tighter heel, but again, I have a regular-sized heel with a, you know, the four foot of, four, my forefoot is like a duck. Uh, so fit slash comfort, I'm going to give it a four out of five stars. Support, four stars, uh, you know, because I have found these shoes to be just amazing. You know, it's a kind of dress shoe you can walk files five miles in when you get them fit right. Construction and durability, I'll also give it four stars. Goodyear welted top lifts that can be replaced you know this style of shoe it, it, uh, wisconsin shoe guy wi shoe guy on uh, youtube and instagram said this he said alan edmonds is more concerned with the durability of the shoe than how it looks out of the box and i agree with them you know in other words they're almost concerned with function more than form uh so for cost and value uh, i'm going to give it a four stars you know, especially considering the fact that I paid $97 for these things. You know, if you keep your eyes out, Allen Edmonds has very frequent sales. You know, um, the most expensive pair that I've purchased um, out of the four pairs I've purchased new has been the Strands, and I paid three fifteen dollars for those, okay? So I've never paid the three ninety five dollars or four twenty five dollars full retail price. So um, so that's how I feel about the, the shoes themselves. It's my opinion. So if I average my score out, 
then this comes out to a total score of 3.8 out of 5 stars, okay? Um, I hope you got some value out of that. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see some more of the videos that I have, feel free to, you know, check them out. Feel free to subscribe, and I will catch you guys later. All right, God bless. Take care. Please be quiet. Shut up! Quiet.